Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? Me? I would say I'm doing better than average. Thanks for asking. Today I thought we'd do something a little bit different. I thought we would take a look at Facebook advertising, but not from the perspective of you want to create Facebook ads and advertise to an audience, but instead, what is happening to us as the audience? How is Facebook deciding which ads to deliver into my feed, into my newsfeed? How are these ads getting here? And this story comes from a perspective of privacy and security and, and how much of my information is being shared. I hear lots of conversation online and see lots of people concerned about privacy online and indeed we should be concerned about our privacy online. But let's deal from an informed perspective. Let's try and understand how these ads appear in our feeds, not just on Facebook, but also on other websites that we go to. So Facebook advertising from an advertisee's perspective today on Dottotech. You have undoubtedly recognized that the ads that you receive online, whether it's on Facebook or on other websites that you go to, are increasingly go becoming more relevant to what's going on in your life, to the point that sometimes it's scary how much information they seem to have about you or I in order to target these ads towards us, which raises the concern for many of us around how much of our privacy is being compromised by us being online if advertisers can get this granular and this specific about what we might happen to be interested in. And I'm not saying that this is not a valid concern, but I think you should understand the magic that makes this happen. Let's take a step back and let's take a look at how an audience is determined. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in, we're going to create a Facebook ad, or we're going to start the process of creating a Facebook ad, not from the perspective that you want to advertise on Facebook, but to understand the process that the advertiser goes through in order to send their ad to an audience that includes you. So the steps that they're taking to reach you with that message. So it all begins in Facebook, if you've got your ads enabled, with starting to create an ad. And we'll just go to the Create Ad tab right here. And this launches a very simple and basic ad creation tool. It's the easiest way to create ads in Facebook. And you can get more specific. There are more specific tools than this. But you begin by choosing an objective for your campaign, such as sending people to your website or increasing a conversion, which is, for example, having people sign up for a newsletter. So regardless of which of these things that you want to do, you're probably going to be having a goal of having people visit your website. So I'm going to tell Facebook which website it is that I want people to visit. Okay, so we're just going to send them to my website and we're going to continue on with this process. Now, once you've started it, then you, uh, once you started to build the ad, the, actually the very first thing that they ask you is who do you want this ad to be sent to? Who do you want to include in this campaign? What is your target audience? And there's, I don't know, I, I should count them up, but there's, there's at least three or four different ways to build your audience and to determine to, to the processes that you undertake in order to ultimately deliver this ad onto your feed. So we can begin with this top one, which is custom audiences. Now, custom audiences are actually designed uh, based on information that you give Facebook about people who are already following you. So with a custom audience, you can upload your contact list your newsletter list. I can upload my list of all the different email addresses of people who are subscribed to my newsletter. Facebook looks at anybody that they find with an email address in that list that also has their email address as they're attached to their Facebook account, they add them to that custom audience. So it's very easy for a brand or for an individual to advertise to people who are already enrolled in their enrolled in their community, as it were. So if I'm doing a, a new webinar and I want to really up the, uh, up, the, uh, up, up the exposure of that webinar, I send it out in my newsletter, but I also advertise it to the people who I'm sending it to in my newsletter into their Facebook feed by choosing that custom audience. So this is why you might be seeing some messages from people who you're subscribed to. The reason is they've actually uploaded that list, or one of the, it might be the reason that they've uploaded that list already to you. Uh, we can also determine which, you can also be receiving ads based on who you're following on Facebook, which I'll be talking about in a moment. But this custom audience, this idea of creating custom audiences from your list extends beyond that. So it starts with you upload the list of people who are already subscribed to your newsletter, and then you can advertise to them. But then Facebook will also create in, a, in another tool, uh, but they will create something called a look-alike 
audience, which is they take all of the different information they have about the audience that you've identified as already following you, and then they create a much larger list on Facebook of people whose who's, uh, who's, uh, specific uh, interests are very similar to the specific interests of the people following you. So that's a way for growing your list and for growing your community and advertising to a much larger market. So the ads might come to you because your specific information and the things that you've clicked on and liked and in your age and where you live is similar to other people who happen to be interested in the topic that you're gonna be sent out. So one of them is very specific and the other is quite general, but those are two different ways that ads might start to appear in your feed. Moving on through the different types of audiences that you can choose, and you can combine these audiences together in your campaign, but moving on through the list, we can just choose basic locations. You can choose geographic locations that, such as Canada, and then you can choose age, gender, languages spoke, those sorts of information can be all included. And the thing about location-based information is you can get very, very granular. I live in Vancouver, so if I just wanted to advertise to people in the Vancouver region, I can just start typing in Vancouver, and I can choose all of Vancouver, and we can see that the audience goes in the 25-mile area around Vancouver, there's a potential reach of now 1.4 million people. But if you don't live in Canada, if you live in the States, and you want to actually get even more granular, you can start to type in a postal code and look what happens. You can actually choose a postal code if you wanted to just send to people in Stanhope, United States. I don't even know where Stanhope is, but if I clicked on that, it's in Iowa. There we go. So the potential audience is fewer than a thousand people. But if you're a realtor in that community and you want to let people know about what to, that you have an open house coming up, that might be a way that you granularly reach people that are just in your marketplace. So based on where you live, you can also get advertising specific to you. So based on what lists you signed up for, what newsletters you signed up for, who you're already in their community, that's one level of ads. Based on your age, your sex, your old personal interests, searches are coming based on that. And then also just based on the actual location that you live in is another way that people can find you. I'm just gonna switch, switch, switch this back to Canada here. There we go. And we will continue because there are more ways to target audiences. For advertisers, this business of learning how to create custom audiences that you can reach and how to define which audience is being reached by your ads is probably the most important skill in managing their Facebook ads. Of course, copywriting and having good product and all those things are also important, but this business of knowing who to reach and how to reach them, this is a really important skill to learn. The other area, which is I find quite fascinating, is based on interest. Now, based on interest, you can go broad strokes, like people who happen to be just interested in live events, ballet, you can choose and you can get, you can choose people that are expressing interest in those aspects. So if you're selling ballet supplies, you would choose people that are interested in ballet. And if we take a look in Canada, we've gone from millions and millions of people, the potential reach of people who have indicated an interest in ballet is now 320,000 people. So that's the people who you'd be advertising to if you happen to be selling ballet shoes, I guess. You'd be coming, you'd be building a custom audience based on that. So your broad stroke interests also come in. But there's one other area that this interest level here can come in. I'm just gonna delete that criteria. And you can, you can get lost, you can play with this for hours, is you can actually start to type in the websites or the, the, um, the, the Facebook groups that people are following. So people, when you click like on somebody's Facebook page or on somebody's group, like a brand like Dottotech, if you've clicked like on Dottotech, people who are competitors to me or myself can advertise to you on Facebook based on the fact that you've liked Dottotech. So if I'm, I'm, in the, uh, I'm in the information marketing space, so if I start typing in social media examiner, which is of course a, a, wonderful, uh, a, a wonderful website that talks about all things related to Facebook advertising and other things, but if I wanted to advertise to that group, so if I type in social media examiner, there they are right there, I choose that group, you can see that in Canada, my audience is now gone and it calculates how many people, 26,000 people in Canada between the ages of 18 and 65 have clicked like on the social media examiner website. So I can now advertise to just that group. So you can see how 
layer by layer, you can get very specific to the people who might be interested in what you're offering. That's why you end up with some very specific ads coming that su sometimes surprise you. How do they know I'm interested in those things? It's based on your activities online. I never know who the person is. I just know what it is that they happen to have been interested in in order to finally reach them with these ads. Now that's kind of the broad stroke advertising aspect. There is one other type of ad that's gonna be uh, sent to you which is increasingly relevant and that is what's called ad retargeting which happens on Facebook and on Google just in, in regular ads. Ad retargeting is based on them dropping a pixel, a, a cookie on your browser when you visit a checkout page or when you visit somebody's page. And this is one that I think, uh, this is one that's probably gonna irritate people more than anything else at the end of the day. And this is the one that tends to bother me the most. If I go to Amazon and I go and say, take a look at a camera and I go and see how much the price of that camera is, uh, then all of a sudden for several days afterwards, maybe for weeks afterwards, I'll be getting ads to buy that camera from Amazon and maybe from other, even other, even, even other online stores based on the fact that I looked at that product. That's because they identify not me personally, but my system as one that was looking at that particular ad. Ad retargeting is very powerful from an advertising perspective, but it's probably the most invasive from a personal perspective, from you coming, kind of coming in to my space. Now the cool thing about it is if you take advantage of that, if you are a consumer that's really interested in that, they will start to, they, there's, a, there's a chance that they'll start to send some coupons and they'll send you better offers for that price to try and incite you to buy because they know you're interested. And if you've actually signed into a shopping cart and you've given them your email address and that sort of stuff, they might even be emailing you coupons to take for, for a lower price on a site that you've returned to several different times. So this whole concept of ad retargeting can end up sending you money, but it can also be, you can also end up being badgered slightly as they bombard you with the same ad of something that you have to be looking at and in some cases it could be socially awkward if you're looking at buying your wife or your significant other a present you've gone to check the shopping cart and you've taken a good hard look at it and you use the same computer as your partner does and then they sign into the computer and all of a sudden there's ads coming for the present that you were thinking of buying for them it could be awkward for you so how do you avoid that well if you're shopping and you don't want that information to be shared uh, you want to go in incognito mode or private mode when you're doing your shopping and then they won't be tracking you or just refuse those tracking Tracking pixels turn off all of the tracking. By and large, I think tracking does end up enriching us for the most part, uh, but there are also going to be cases where, as I've just mentioned, it can be a problematic or it could be just downright irritating. Do you feel you know and understand a little bit better how this whole thing works, how these ads now appear in your feed? It's not so much an invasion of your privacy uh, as, as you might think, or perhaps it's more of an invasion of your privacy than you think, but now you should hopefully have a better comprehension and understanding of how it all works. Well, that's it. I, I hope you found today's video to be useful. <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed to now ask you to sign up for any of my newsletters and that sort of stuff because you're probably worrying that I'm going to be retargeting you like crazy. And uh, yeah, there's a chance that that might happen. But there are three ways to stay in touch with us here in Dotto Tech. The first is, of course, please subscribe to our channel so you hear about all of our different uh, videos as they come out. Second is subscribe to my newsletter. There you'll hear about all of the different special offers we have on Dotto Tech, including upcoming live webinars that we have deliver on a variety of different productivity and online topics. And finally, Dotto Tech is a community-funded site. We're supported by you, the community that views the content through the crowdfunding site Patreon. If you have a few moments, drop by the Patreon page and take a look. Crowdfunding is awesome from my perspective, but it's also awesome from your perspective because there's some wonderful perks involved in being a patron of Dotto Tech. Until next time, I am Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.